Hi, my name is Kelvin Newman and welcome to the Brighton SEO podcast, where we share talks from one of the world's most popular search marketing conferences. The event started out as a few people meeting in an upstairs room of a pub and is now attended by over 3,000 people from all over the world. This episode is a recording of one of the speakers at a recent event. We're going to start off with Stefan, who's going to talk about how to hire an insanely great SEO. We're then going to move on and talk about GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulations, uh, which I know is worrying lots of you. Uh, and then we're going to talk about doubling close rates, and we're going, to, we're going to chat about that a bit more. So it's my pleasure, first of all, to bring Stefan Spencer up to the stage and join me giving a round of applause. Thank you. So um, I'm Stefan Spencer, and uh, these are some of my accolades, blah, blah, blah. But you don't care about that. Oh, these are my books. Who wants a book? Anyone want a book? I brought, I brought a couple. This is the one I'm most known for, The Art of SEO. Like, who really wants a book? Like, enough to come get it. <laughs> like, literally to come get it. <laughs> Fortune favors the bold. Should we try this again? Who wants a book? <laughs> That's social e-commerce, so all about how to leverage Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and LinkedIn and all that. And then uh, Google Power Search. I'm going to hold on to this one. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay, I'll give out more later. In fact, if you post a really cool tweet, you might get a book. So I brought some more with me. And these are my podcasts. You should subscribe because they are awesome. This is Marketing Speak and then The Optimized Geek because I'm The Optimized Geek. And this is actually not an SEO podcast. This is life hacking, biohacking. If you're into um, Tim Ferriss, who likes Tim Ferriss? He was one of my guests. Uh, Dave Asprey, The Bulletproof Diet, Bulletproof Coffee. Anyone into Bulletproof? Yep, he was one of my guests. Okay, so question for you. Who's in the market to hire an SEO employee? All right. How many to hire a contractor? How many to hire an agency? OK. All right, so this is going to apply regardless of which category you fit in. OK, so that's pretty cool. And um, I've got a seven-step process. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go through these seven steps. We're going to start with how to get the garden to weed itself, how to get people to uh, exclude themselves by making stupid mistakes. Okay, who's familiar with the band Van Halen? Okay, David Lee Roth, he famously had this clause in his contracts which required a jar of M&Ms in his dressing room and it had to not have a certain color of M&M in there. Why would he be so anal about that? So it's so weird, right? It wasn't weird at all. It was really smart because if he saw that color of M&M in there, he knew that his contract was not red and all the special lighting effects that they needed were probably not done correctly. And they had a lot of, a lot was writing on, including actual lives were riding on the correct wiring and everything of the lighting. So he would go and check out the lighting if the M&Ms weren't right. So I think of it this way, if you have your special clauses in your contract, but it's in the job posting, isn't that clever? Kind of like the M&Ms. So the job posting is their first contact with you, their first impression of you, so you need to also present a really positive front for yourself. Think of it as your opportunity to sell them as well as them wanting to put their best foot forward. So when you write your job posting, tell a story, make it about more of me too than about so what. In fact, all copywriting should be this way. Think of it this way. If people are reading it and thinking so what, so what, so what, so what, 
There's not a lot of connection there. If it's a lot of me too, like for example, if I, in my job posting, talk about how I uh, started doing uh, computer stuff when I was a kid, started programming when I was uh, like 13 years old, taught myself machine language programming, assembly language and stuff, they might not uh, connect with the assembly language piece, but they might connect with being a real geek and being on the computer all the time when they were a kid. So I tell that little story and I say, look, I turned that little hobby into a business and now I'm employing a, a wonderful team of people and I would love for you to be on that team. See how that's a me too? Instead of a so what? If I said, you know, we have X clients and blah, 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 and it's all about me and my accolades, my successes, there's no connection there. So it's all about the me too, not the so what. So after you've sold them on how amazing it is to work for you, then you're going to incorporate some really cool stuff into the job advert, kind of like the M&Ms. Okay, now, where do I post this um, job advert, this job posting? I post to Craigslist. I've tried a lot of different places, and Craigslist works like gangbusters. Do you guys have Craigslist here in the UK? Yeah. Even if you... And I'm curious, how many of you are looking for people maybe potentially overseas? Anyone? Okay, so how many only want to hire people in the UK? Okay, so it's a mix. If you're open to hiring people outside of the UK, Craigslist in the US, I would target college towns, bigger college towns, Boston, New York City, Chicago, rather than the smaller cities. Small college towns like Madison, Wisconsin, not a great fit because even though it sounds like, sounds good, there's not enough volume there. And you're going to weed out a lot of the candidates very quickly using my M&M's process, so we'll find out. So that's a really effective place. Now, if you're looking to hire people out of the Philippines, you can get really great people out of the Philippines. Anyone interested in hiring out of the Philippines? Okay, so for those of you who are, onlinejobs.ph. That is essentially the Craigslist for jobs in the Philippines. And if you're looking to use a service like a recruiting firm, there's a really great service called Virtual Staff Finder, also in the Philippines. Okay. So now we got the job posting, but we're going to insert the M&M's clauses in there, so stay tuned for that. I want to delegate the screening process because that's a headache, and um, it's really simple to check for the M&Ms. You don't need a rocket scientist to do that part of the process. I have a virtual assistant working for me who goes through this initial screening process. I don't even look at the CVs, the resumes when they come in. All I do is jump on the interviews once they've made it past the initial screening process. So delegate that. And I also have a riddle or test assignment that I incorporate into it. Here's where the M&Ms come in. Okay, so if you have some sort of um, process that they have to pay attention to details, now you've got something going for you where you weed out a lot of the people who are not that attentive to detail. So I'll incorporate a problem-solving riddle, and the problem-solving riddle kind of goes like this. So we have a, uh, and this is just an example. So we have a child, we have a convict, and we have a policeman on one side of the river. The boat only fits two people. All three need to get across. You can't leave the convict alone or with the child by um, himself, and blah, blah, blah. Right? So the, the parameters there. Get them all across. Show your work. If somebody sees that in the job advert, many of the people are lazy, and they won't bother filling out the job advert. They, they won't apply, and that's great. I don't want them, because if they're lazy, I don't want them working for me. If they're not attentive to detail, and they're just blasting out all this stuff without paying real attention to each job advert, I don't want them either. See how powerful this is? Another way you could do this without using a riddle is to incorporate something into the instructions like put a certain keyword in the email that you send me in the subject line. Right. 
like, um, uh, let's see, squirrel, if you're, um, you know, put the word squirrel or the word cheetah or whatever in the subject line, okay? Another way you can do it is to only allow them to apply via voicemail. You have to give these certain details in the voicemail. Do not email me. I will not consider any emailed uh, CVs. You must leave a voicemail first. Or a combination. So a question for you. What are some test assignments that you might give as a way to weed out the you know, not so qualified candidates? Something, some sort of test, some sort of riddle or um, challenge of some sort. Any ideas? Yeah. Okay, so send this file, uh, send the CV in a certain file format like a PDF. We'll only accept PDFs as, uh, uh, as attachments. Cool, okay. Other ideas? Yeah. Okay, so a paid test brief of one piece of equipment of, of, of uh, one t one piece of content, and they have to, they, so they get paid for that, but they have to do that before they can get hired. Awesome. Any others? Cool. Okay. So did they defend their wrong answer? Oh, by the way, for giving me a a, a good. Um, for, for participation. Here you go. Thanks very much. Yep. And who is the other person? You? Okay. Tell me to walk all the way. <laughs> all right. And here's the deal breaker for sure. Did they defend their wrong answer? Like, but, uh, you know, the, no, I, I think it works if you do this with the, uh, the boat and blah, blah, blah. No, because if that's how they operate before they get hired, I don't want that kind of headache once they're on board. So step two is to review their social media profiles. There's gold in those social media profiles. Part of the process I require as a, in, in the job advert, in the posting, I say send me at least one social media profile. It could be their own personal, it could be uh, their company one, or one that they work on for their employer. I don't care, I just wanna see a social media profile. Ideally, if they send me a personal one, then I can get a lot of dirt on them. So here's what I do. I ask myself the following questions. Are they connected with an active in the SEO community, do they s seek out uh, opportunities to answer SEO questions or at least you know, participate in the conversation, asking questions? What kind of content are they sharing? Is it remarkable content? By the way, I have already uploaded this to SlideShare. So you don't have to take notes unless you want to. And if you're wondering what my SlideShare is, I'm gonna quickly go back here to Da, da, da. This slide, okay? Slideshare.net slash Stephen Spencer. Oh, I'll just keep it there for a second more. Slideshare.net slash Stephen Spencer. Yeah, you can take a picture of the slide. Okay. So, more questions, more weeding out questions. Have they ever publicly criticized or bashed their employers, coworkers, clients? That's a bad one. Is there evidence they participate in SEO conferences, trainings, events, meetups, discussion groups? That's a good one. I really want to see some of that. How is their spelling and grammar? Are they attentive to detail? Are they swearing in their social media posts? Do they participate in um, volunteer opportunities? Are they giving back? Do they have personality flags, things that just don't seem real cool, like antisocial behavior type things? Mood swings? 
Are they racist? Are they prejudiced? Is there evidence of illegal activities, illegal drugs, etc.? Other red flags, not a good fit culturally. And be careful, because I don't know what the laws are here in the UK, but in the States, there are discrimination laws. If you use this in a way that discriminates, you're in plain and dangerous territory. Step three, A-B testing. You're A-B testing all sorts of other stuff. Why aren't you A-B testing your uh, job adverts? Who, who's ever A-B tested a job advert? Really? Just, okay, so two of you. Okay, you can get books. <laughs> You're probably wondering how many books I have behind there. <laughs> All right, who, who raised their hand? Okay. They're really heavy because I am not taking them back. <laughs> not going back to LA. All right, so A-B testing. How would you A-B test a job advert? What would you put into a, um, an A-B test? Job titles. Job titles, yep. Maybe some of the stories that I talked about with the, either the Me Too or the So What's, yes? The description of the job itself, the job duties and responsibilities, yep. The image, right? So are you going to put a picture of you know, happy staff or stock photos or whatever? Like, heaven forbid that. Yeah? Perhaps pitch the jobs at slightly different levels, maybe a senior and a junior position so you can see. Right. So, so, so the minimum requirements of their, um, their past experience and the kind of senior leadership level versus junior levels. Perfect. Cultural elements? Okay, so behaviors, things that I'm looking for. We've met uh, little one-minute videos of existing staff talking about their roles and what the culture is like. All right. Nice. Yeah, so he says uh, little one-minute videos uh, kind of showing what it's like to be at, at that um, uh, company and test the different videos, see which ones perform the best. Yeah. Format, whether it's in bullet points or continuous Okay, bullet points, bullet points versus continuous pros. Yeah, these are great tests. I love it. Any others? Yeah. Yeah, tone of voice and how you describe stuff. Right. So if you're using passive voice versus active voice or third person instead of first person, or yeah, great. Okay. So I love A/B testing, and it really helps you hone in on the best performing job ads. Next step is to use trick questions in the first interview. Oftentimes, I'm not even conducting the first interview. I have one of my team do it. And they, they're armed with certain trick questions that will help them weed out the fakers and the charlatans. So a question for you. What are some trick questions that you might consider asking in an interview? Yeah. What if, uh, for an interview specialist, what if somebody offers you a link like a OK. So if you... Uh, so you give a scenario, if you're a link building specialist, what do you do if somebody offers you a link by paying for it? So you have to buy the link. What do you do? Kind of a ethical scenario. I like it. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. So say the first part again, because it's Get them to rank themselves out of 10. Whoa. In terms of SEO knowledge and see if they're overly arrogant or full of hubris. Nice. I like it. OK. Yeah. What's the last thing you've read about SEO? What's the last thing you've read about SEO? Perfect. OK. These are great trick questions. Let me give you a few more. What's your process for optimizing meta keywords? These are trick questions because there's really only one right answer. I want trick questions that anybody could ask. They don't have to have any knowledge in SEO. And they can weed out the candidates. What's the right answer to what's your process for optimizing meta keywords? Like a chuckle, right? Like, ha-ha, right? You're joking? 
Meta keyword, if they say anything along the lines of, well, meta keywords don't count so much anymore, or you know, they've been discounted over time, Google doesn't really count them so much. All those are wrong answers, because the only right answer is meta keywords never counted in Google. Never, ever, ever counted. They were never a positive ranking signal. And if they say anything to the contrary, then they're out. Here's another one. What's a good keyword density to aim for? Keyword density, like seriously? Who's measured keyword density in the last decade? I mean, it's just ridiculous. What's the difference between panda and penguin? Oh, that's a good one, right? If you don't know that, you're out. And this is something where you can easily explain to the first interviewer, Panda's about content, you know, low quality content, and Penguin is about links. They're, they can't fake that. If the person is talking about, well, um, you know, Panda and Penguin are pretty similar, but they're kind of different, and then they're, they're just going on some tangent about it, and it's not, well, content and links, or they get it wrong and they put it the other way around. I've had that happen. Like, seriously? You, the opposite? Okay, here's another one. What's more important, attention to detail, honesty, dedication, technical acumen, or creativity? So let's actually try this exercise. What's more important? So I'm asking you, you're my candidates. Attention to detail, honesty, dedication, technical acumen, or creativity? No, that's not, the, uh, it's not the, yeah, they're all important. Pick one. So let's actually, let's, let's do a little poll. Attention to detail. Who says attention to detail? Okay. Who says honesty? Okay, so a bunch of you. Okay. Dedication. Okay, also a bunch of you. Technical acumen. Okay. And creativity. All right, so not that many cre... Yeah, we don't need anybody creative. So what's the right answer? Any guess? Okay. It's actually honesty. This is, called, this is called the honesty test. If somebody's not honest, they're out. If that's not their highest value, like I've had staff before where I don't know what they were thinking, but I could see their computer uh, screen's reflection um, b behind them on, on the, the window. And they'd like... <laughs> as soon as I started walking up. Like, what the hell? You think I'm stupid? And then they're you know, hiding windows and as I'm walking up. I don't want that. Honesty is number one. So here is a really cool uh, free bonus for you guys. I have actually two things. But the SEO BS detector has more trick questions in it. If you want these kind of powerful trick questions with the answers, there you go. Stephen Spencer, P H A N, Stephen Spencer dot com slash Brighton. And then I also have a SEO hiring blueprint with the seven step process in it. So that's uh, pretty cool. I'd, if you're taking a picture, go ahead. Okay. So, what is the most important of the five qualities? Remember? Honesty. Step five ask specific questions that can prove expertise. I asked them, what's your wellspring? In other words, what is your gift? What are you so amazing at? And then what's your quicksand? Where do you get stuck? Where is it really hard for you? Where is it a big challenge? Powerful questions. And I'm looking for specifics. This is super important when you are interviewing people, always ask for specific examples. Don't just say, you know, tell me, um, you know, what's more important, uh, creativity or attention to detail. Tell me about a time where your creativity saved a project or, you know, changed an outcome. Give me a specific example. And if I'm starting to develop this picture of them, I ask for contrary evidence because I want to uh, flip that and see if I can actually find evidence to the contrary. Let's say, oh, wow, they don't seem really attentive to detail. Hmm, I'm thinking that in my head. Tell me about a time when you were super attentive to detail and that saved a project. See, I'm looking for contrary evidence. 
and keep your mouth shut. They should be talking 80% of the time, you 20%. I'm looking for opportunities for them to show their desire to learn, like what trainings have you gone on and tell me some of the things you've learned at some conferences, oh you were at Brighton SEO, tell me about that, what were some takeaways. Where are you teaching other people? Because if you teach others, your retention rates go sky high. It's like 90 some percent when you have the intention of teaching something to others as you're learning it versus just regularly listening to, listening to it. And then what's their link building philosophy that goes into your question about uh, that ethics question? Right, so how, how, what's legit in terms of link building and what's not? And then step six is the second interview, bring in an expert such as myself. I would come in and for my clients, I would participate in the second interview process and uh, weed out a lot of uh, fakers that way. And then uh, step seven is confirm the fit during the trial period. So. What are their strengths? I use StrengthsFinder 2.0. It's $15 or $18 for that test. Awesome, awesome test. Uh, I find out what their primary and secondary advantages are using the Fascinate uh, test from Sally Hogshead. And I have them do a DISC assessment. That one's free. You can go to TonyRobbins.com slash DISC for that one, D-I-S-C. Uh, find out you know, how introverted or extroverted they are how dominant they are, how steady they are, how attentive to detail they are, and then their va values, their highest values. So then I define uh, co collaboratively with them their roles, responsibilities, handoffs, and success metrics. I have them that take this test, which is also free. It's a Demartini values determination. So I know their highest values, their hi hierarchy of values. And I'll just ask you a question, what's your highest value? Is it like family? Is it um, your church, your, your children, uh, travel, your job? What is it? Anyone want to throw out what their highest value is? Anyone? Kids. Kids? Anyone else? Any, anything different? Family. Job? Family? family? Yeah, so everybody has different values and their hierarchy is different. So if I match their job duties and description with those highest values, like for example, if their highest value is travel and one of their jobs as a virtual assistant working for me is booking my travel, it's like, you can become a travel ninja. You're gonna, I'm going to show you stuff about how to get the best deals on Priceline and through Orbitz and so forth that blow your mind and you can travel for half of the price that you would normally would have traveled for, you could travel for the world potentially with this kind of knowledge. And you're like, wow, that sounds really cool. Okay, so that's what I do. And then um, another quick question, what's the best indicator of future behavior? Any ideas? Past behavior. You get a book, so come up afterwards. Best indicator of future behavior is past behavior. So you're looking for that evidence that they've achieved these things and have these qualities, these traits, these attributes in past jobs throughout their life because you cannot instill new values and attributes in them. You can only teach them the job and the, the skills. So there we go. Um, again, here's the URL, stephanspencer.com slash Brighton. And you get some other stuff too, besides the uh, hiring blueprint and the BS detector. Uh, you get like uh, chapter seven from the book, which is all about content marketing and some other cool stuff. Thank you very much. This was originally recorded at a Brighton SEO conference. If you want to listen to more episodes or find out about the conference itself, you can do at brightonseo.com. 